Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel. As always, I appreciate all of you tuning in to my antics, my projects, and just everyday life in my backyard, so to speak. And uh, we got pretty good wind going today. The old windmill, she's spinning, producing some uh, electricity for me, which is my thing just zoom, gets a gust of wind and it just, just camera's not gonna pick it up because of the frame rate and stuff like that. But it gets, gets it to a worry blur. <laughs> uh, got a special treat. I don't know if it's a special treat, so to speak, but check this out. Came in the mail today. It's a new gauge cluster for Big Mo. And people, people might be going, I thought you weren't restoring this. Well, I'm not. I am fixing it though, so it's, you know, I can see the gauges. Let's get inside here. I'll show you the current gauge cluster and what you can and can't see. And uh, this thing is heavy. This black part is not plastic. This black part is aluminum. It's cast aluminum. And this back is cast aluminum. And it's just, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if that inside is actual glass and not plastic. Now the one that's in it, I'm gonna set this in a place where I don't drop it. I'm gonna put it on the hood. Boom. But the cool part about this one here is it's clear in the first place. The RPMs are counterclockwise. It's so funny because it has RPMs times 100. So that's 200, 400. So this goes up to like 2,600 RPM. So when you're revving it up, you're actually gonna use quite a bit of the needle range. It's got temperature and fuel. Those are the key ones. There is lights, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, maybe you can see it there. There's a battery on the left. Looks like maybe oil pressure on the right and turn signal and then just a random red one there in the middle. Let me show you what it looks like inside. Now, where are we at on the tractor here? My wife and I were able to muscle this weight back up onto my pallet jack so I can get it back under here so I can put the rest of the weights on. That's where we're at. Everything else is locked in. I've got my this rod that ties both ends tires together down. I re I re uh, packed them with grease. Put new boots on the bottom here. Got these uh, steer cylinders all put back on on both sides. Got this painted black. I'm on the dark side of the building now. This painted black so we can pull this tape off and put some never sees on here and get my new tire and newly painted wheel on here. Well, what do you know everybody, I'm back. It's a couple days later, backhoe is back together. And you know, we bought some plants, my wife and I did at the local big box store and she's like, when are you gonna plant them plants? I said, I'll plant them when I'm ready. I said, when I say I'll do it, I'll do it. I don't need to be reminded every six months. Today's the day. And by golly, you spent 37 days putting your backhoe back together. Why wouldn't you use it to plant some plants? <laughs> Let's do this.
you're not using your Ford 550 backhoe to, bet, to plant your Susan Magnolia bushes, then go back to the man card store and get a refund on your man card because you don't deserve it. If you have it and you don't use it, sell it. This is my big shovel. <laughs> yeah. I dug it a hair deep <laughs> but that's okay that's quite all right <laughs> now that we've properly loosened the dirt the plants will have some good loose soil to try to spread their roots into <laughs> Look, it was root bound. We're fixing a problem. That might still be a little deep. It's important to aerate the soil. I think right about there looks pretty good. Yeah. I didn't realize to become a master gardener, all I needed was a backhoe. Yeah. Missed this one by a little bit. See, the first one I used my shovel. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a big enough hole to Let's just say fine center. <laughs> Bigger hole would have been better. Back hole, always better. Make no mistake about it, that's a heavy root ball. It's so full of clay, that's a big joker. We got it out of there. Big Mo did it, but look at that. Look at that thing. Now we'll see if I can get underneath it with the forks and pick it up. It picked up some pretty big pieces of concrete. We'll see what it'll do here.
So hopefully I can get up this hill with it without spinning. There's a lot of weight. Oh, there, I just spun out. Dang it.
Well, folks, as you can tell, I'm walking underneath an umbrella today. Umbrella? 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 Uh, I'm going to take you a spin around here. Take you. It's hard to see, but right in the middle of the shot there, you can see the tracks going up the hill. I ran over multiple times yesterday with the tractor. But getting that big stump up the hill, that thing was immensely heavy. And somebody might said, you should have taken more dirt off of that so you can fill the hole back in. Well, that's okay because I got plenty of dirt to push back in. And I also have plenty of grading I'm going to do and plenty of dirt to uh, you know, come from that grading, so to speak. This is the area where the chicken house used to be. Those of you that's been following for a little while. And that first hole over there to the left there is the... One stump I took out yesterday, and I didn't get any digging on that because the battery was dead and I didn't want to change the battery out. And this is the hole to the right, it's the bigger hole actually, that I ended up pulling that big heavy stump out. I don't know what kind of tree it was, but it had a heck of a root system. And uh, now it's time to fill it back in. Been perfect to fill it part way back in yesterday because the rain would help settle things in. I got one stump left and that's the hickory stump from the hickory tree that tree you saw me picking up the limbs and stuff i picked up some by hand threw them on the forks and holy smokes that wood is so dense and so heavy it's just it's amazing actually it's i wouldn't i wouldn't say ridiculous it's just amazing kind of tree but yeah that's uh that's the work we did yesterday i got since I got it all back together now, whoa, and I got an out, whoa, that's, whoa, that's all so slippery. Woo. Image, image stabilization will not do justice to what I just did to recover myself. And I'll probably be sore tomorrow. <laughs> but it's so greasy out. Well, it rained the day before yesterday quite a bit. And then it rained a lot last, yesterday afternoon and last night. So I actually took the opportunity to do some yard work, as I would call it, I guess. Uh, planting some plants and then just getting this, some of the loose ends cleaned up around here. Got one more stump to dig up and then I can start grading this land and then I'm gonna start removing more concrete. But to say the least, Big Mo is back in action and operational and got some mud on the tires. Them front tires don't look new anymore. But the nice thing about having those nice front tires on there is a lot of confidence that it's not going to go flat. I'm not going to have to air it up. Stability, you know, the whole nine yards. Now, as you saw earlier in the video, I, uh, when I was taking that stump down the hill, I had actually, since the hill, it's hard to see, hills and stuff don't show up on camera real good, but from right here to the right of that boat, it goes downhill and leans pretty hard to the right. Well, what I did, right or wrong, because I'm new to the backhoe world and I'm learning, and the whole, whole time I'm trying to learn without dying, is I took this backhoe part and I swung it a little bit to the right as a counterbalance because I had to have, I had that big old stump on the front. Well, when the stump came off a little bit there, it, it tipped and it may not have happened, but I swear these two wheels came off the ground. The back, the front wheel and the back wheel came off the ground. Probably the back wheel, the front end articulates enough that it probably kept both wheels on the ground there. But, and it was actually, you know, tilted toward the uphill side. So, uh, lesson learned. Slow and steady wins the race, right? But it's nice having that dash working again. I can, I got my hour meter working and my RPMs working. I think the next step I need to do, I couldn't get my RPMs to go over 1800, which on a diesel, that's fine. But I think I've got a fuel filter that needs replaced. I haven't done that yet. Now keep in mind, I've only ran this thing approximately 32 hours since I've had it. Uh, there again, some more maintenance needed. We've put a lot of uh, dollars into this so far, getting it back to this point. Uh, there again, trying to keep, uh, what do I wanna say? adding reliability to the process so I can go out and do stuff out here for an entire day and not worry about stuff going bad. These hoses here, I've got on order. I know it's a little darker in here, but this one's frayed here. It's got rubbed through up here. 
both hoses and these are the hoses that run the bucket now the interesting part about this is i don't feel like i have enough power but maybe i do uh, on the curl the curl is pretty strong but i'm not sure why it goes from a three quarter inch hose here actually i think this is a yes it's a three quarter inch hose because these are an inch and a 16th thread here jac fitting that makes this a three quarter inch hose i believe dropping down to like a half inch hose here so i ordered hose long enough to do a 90 up there still and come down and actually hang down a little bit further and come up and hook into right into this fitting with the proper size hose on both sides plus i paid up for the hose the hose i got was uh it's like five dollars a foot and it's abrasion resistant hose it's, since this is going to be down in the fray you know in the limbs in dirt and everything else it could be rubbed on and i want to make sure it has uh some abrasion resistance there right what else did we got here so we did get all the weights back on this area is in all the parts are off the shelf now except for the parts i didn't need old parts this bench here is an absolute mess i've got some cleaning up to do here i've got empty buckets of hydraulic fluid the good news is the hydraulic fluid i'm pretty sure is still full since you know we're not leaking any of it let's see what we got here oh yeah she's way up past full but it's also i'm checking full with the rear as i stated before in the last video with the rear outriggers down when they're down there's a lot of fluid goes into those because you think about a cylinder like this when it's down all the fluid i shouldn't say all the fluid there's more fluid in the outreached position of this cylinder than it is when it's collapsed like this because the cubic inches of space inside the cylinder are also taken up by this ram when it's fully extended and this piston comes all the way up now that cylinder's you know whatever this four inch five inch bore is completely full of fluid well when you do these things here these outriggers you bring them all the way down both of them are full of fluid and you want to make sure that it still checks full because you want it full when you're doing all the backhoe work you don't want to be running low on fluid you don't want to run the risk of starving your pump and destroying something you just repaired now i gotta tell myself and this will be in a future video uh i shouldn't say telling myself but i i broke it i literally broke it oh 0.2 hours two ten two tenths of an hour however it's measured on that hour meter <laughs> it's uh I broke the, I broke the backhoe that fast, but I didn't break the backhoe. I broke my forklift setup. Now, as you guys know, my forklift setup that I bought has this frame I got with it. Let me see. I'm trying to stay out of the rain here a little bit, but this frame here and how it connects, connects all the way around and makes this rectangle. Uh, I bought that along with the forks and then everything else, you know, here and the thing across the bottom, what? Where's the thing across the bottom? That's what I'm going to get to. All that I built to do this. And this thing has been crazy strong. And I would have never guessed I would have enjoyed forks on my backhoe as much as I have. Because just like that stump and those brush and different things like that. And then if I order a big pallet or something, I can actually unload it. Or if I go to the big box store and buy you know, pallets of stuff, I can offload it where I want. I don't have to leave it on the trailer and try to unload it by hand i can pick it up and set it down so and future firewood stacking log stacking different stuff like that i can pile on pallets and i can pick it up and move it so forks are a huge a huge 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 plus now i've got to show you this because how i broke it is that big stump big stump has been a nemesis but i win i always win this might be the day. I might not win every battle, but I win the war. I thought, well, I've got it running again. I said, I haven't tried just pushing it, you know, with the, with the fork. So I backed up and I hit it with the fork lightly and I saw it move quite a bit because the hydraulics weren't breaking it loose. They, they would bypass, you know. But the, and I'm okay with the hydraulics not being as strong and crazy enough to break itself, which is awesome. If it bypasses, I'd rather have that than bending the hydraulic cylinders breaking pins tearing welds loose so i'm okay with it not being let's just call it herculean power 
it's strong enough as is. It moves a lot of dirt. Way faster than I can do with a shovel, let's tell you that. So I went in there, I hit it with a fork and it moved a little bit. I'm like, cool, I backed up about two feet, hit it again, it moved more. So I backed up like three or four feet and I hit it again and the stump just went Phew. Didn't think anything of it, didn't think anything of it. I played around with the backhoe then trying to get it out of the hole. Then finally I was like, ah, I'm gonna go do something else. Went down over by the pond dam over there went and pushed a little dirt around because some di digging I did last year I wanted to see if I could actually drive on it and did it settle down that I can actually put some weight on it and the answer is pretty much so then I went and pushed because I can still push some dirt with the forks on here it just gets if it's real sticky dirt it just gets all tangled up and stuff but this is really pretty loose and dry so I pushed it picked up and dumped it pushed it and picked up and dumped it the second time and I noticed my forks were just swinging I'm like wait a minute that's not supposed to happen they're not supposed to be swinging what happened because i'm thinking the forks are just pivoting and but it turned out the bottom piece that i'd put across the bottom if you go back to my other videos i had put oh and then this is some like inch or two inch by three quarter inch steel bar this stuff is not light i put that across the bottom and i put these five eight inch shoulder bolts i cut them off welded the head to this bar and put them in the four holes that are in the bottom of the bucket. Well, that traps the bottom from kicking out or doing anything funky. But don't you see that bend that's in there right now? That, that bent, about a 45 degree angle on all four of them and all my welds held just fine. So if anybody ever had any question about my welds, there's your answer. But this part here was bolted, this is heavy. I was bolted to that rectangular frame I showed you that the forks are hooked to. But as you can see here, I didn't really study those welds really close. I was just thought this came off about a 5,000 pound forklift and oh, and this, you know, welded, rated and did everything. But you don't know, you don't know the history of the stuff, right? So you don't know how much it's been abused. Well, that I'm pretty sure what happened when I bumped that, that puts all the pressure down low on the forks. And I'm pretty sure it fractured and or broke the welds at that time. And then proceeded to try to go down in the hole and pick that stump up with the forks and all that fun stuff. And I think at that moment in time when that broke probably, it just rolled those pins out of the hole and bent them. So good news is I'm gonna call it a fairly decent repair, easy repair. Cause I'll actually cut those four bolts back off. I've already bought some new grade eight bolts to weld back on their head, you know, shoulder bolts so I can cut the thread off and use the shoulder part again. And I'll stick that back in place, grind the welds off there and there, V them out a little bit, tack weld it back together, and then throw me some really good beads on there to lock it back down again. <laughs> so it'd be back in business. So I am crazy impressed with how well the forks work moving all that concrete when I took the chicken house down. I mean, I thought if I'm gonna break it, I, I, maybe I weakened it doing that too. Maybe I maybe I stressed those welds out on that piece a little bit doing that, but that's okay. Got a little rain coming down on the tin roof. I hope this mic is picking up my voice and not drowning it out. Typically what I've noticed with these particular mics I use is I can have all kinds of other noise around me when I start talking. The voice puts everything in the back, everything else in the background. Doesn't drown it out completely, but puts everything in the background so you can understand what I'm saying. All right, so that, that's uh, where Big Mo is today. Uh, we got Now that I got an hour meter, I can do all my regular maintenance. Uh, the maintenance book says grease your entire tractor every eight to 10 hours. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot, you know? But if it's out on the job every day, running every day, uh, like me, I ran it two hours yesterday. I got a lot of work done in two hours. And if that's how much I ran it every day, you know, that would get me through a whole week. And then I could, you know, once you got it greased up good, it's just a matter of giving it a few more shots, seeing a little more grease come out and pushing dirt back out of where it don't belong. That being said, uh, the front wheel bearings, the front steering and all that stuff is working fantastic now. Only thing I got left to do, uh, I shouldn't say the only thing, there's always gonna be something to do because it's a 49 year old tractor. As I got my tires sitting over here, a brand new set of tires. We're gonna get a wrestling match going with those. So I wanna clean them up and you know paint them. Now I know because they, they're not quite the same shade of yellow. It's off by a lot. 
These match the tractor, that does not. But I thought, well, I'll make all the shoes match and then, you know, the tractor's just gonna be the tractor thing, right? Uh, I got some work to do on the light up there. The lights are rotated. I'm gonna get some uh, new flashing lights. Those are the flashers, so when you're going down the road, I can hang my slow moving sign off the back of this thing and go from there. But yeah, that's, that's the long and the short. We got mud stuck to my tires. But uh, one thing I have noticed is this, this is wet right here. Well, these cylinders are leaking a little bit. By no means a lot. It's just, just enough to make a damp mess there. So I'm gonna try to, I can, these here, I think these might have a packing head that you can tighten. But one of these days I'll possibly pull the cylinders off, put new seals on everything so it's all, you know, tight and tidy. That would be nice. But obviously there's a lot of pressure put on these things and for no more oil coming out, there's the seals, the upper seals on the packing head are still holding pretty good. This one here, I've replaced these hose Hoses oh, you guys seen, and this is kind of, it's not tight here, it's just they're curled up kind of snug, but I think that'll survive. I almost wish I'd have had a hoses. Uh, I might take those off and measure them. I hate to do that since they're brand new. They could be backups, I guess, um, and get them a little bit longer so they don't have quite as tight of a curl, have a little more loop to them. All right. I need to get this thing back up toward the shop. Not today, it's raining. I'll make a mess. The yard's already a mess and super soft. And this thing will slide around <laughs> like it's like a greased pig. It's, it would be bad. But uh, we got some other stuff to do. And I want to get that stuff done uh, around the property here. And now that Big Mo's back together, I can focus now. I appreciate everybody that's been watching the series on Big Mo and paying attention and asking questions and giving comments it's awesome continue to do that i appreciate it and i know this series was a little long a lot of you enjoyed it has commented that you enjoy it and uh but it drug out a little bit because parts drug out and it's not fast putting it back together uh, i'm doing it on nights and weekends and I also got to do things with my wife and kids and different things like that. So it takes up some time, right? And I can't focus all my energy on it. And uh, one day, sometime in the future, if I'm doing YouTube full time, you'll see things progress faster because if I was putting 40 hours a week just toward the YouTube stuff, that'd be a ton of stuff getting done. It's, it boggles the mind to think about it. All right, we've got a lot of trash to pick up, a lot of tools to put away and uh, We'll see you on the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you on the next video. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. And uh, I'm out.